Let's come to our yoga mats. We're going to start seated today. Um, if you prefer a comfortable chair or couch, um, as opposed to sitting on the floor, that is absolutely an option. I'm going to sit up high on a bolster. I encourage you to create some height, something to sit up on so that there's less uh, demand on the hips. You can get extra cozy if you add a little cushioning beneath your feet. I have a kind of I'm, I'm kind of hyper mobile, so um, my hips are very open. <laughs> but if that's not the case for you, which it's not for many, many people, having some blocks wedged underneath your thighs or underneath your knees or in some kind of uh, place that feels supportive that can take more pressure off of the ankles and your hips. So take your time setting up in a comfortable place and just let your hands rest on your knees or in your lap and maybe close your eyes if that feels right to you or perhaps just gazing downward at the floor taking an internal viewpoint now take a few moments to check in with yourself how are you doing in this moment How is your breath flowing in this moment? Are there any thoughts roaming around your head that you just can't see or any topics you just can't seem to get your mind off of today or any dominant thoughts that you can identify and taking a moment to reflect on why you're here to practice yoga today what brings you to this class how might you hope to feel And using any of the information you found or beyond with these last few questions, feel free to come up with some kind of intention or dedication for your practice. Sometimes phrasing it like an affirmation can be nice, but all no rules apply so make it work for you and drawing more awareness to your breath now let's take some full breaths in and out nothing fancy just some present moment awareness nasal breathing if possible and when other thoughts pop into your mind like they're bound to see if you can refocus your attention on your breath Over the course of the next few breaths, let your chin come down toward your chest in an extra slow motion, just millimeter by millimeter, slowly lowering your chin. Just see where you naturally come to rest without forcing yourself to go any farther. 
And take a couple breaths here, focusing now on any sensations through the back of your neck. And your shoulders, do they have any connection here you can feel? And again, in this very slow motion, we'll bring the right ear toward the right shoulder. But like you're kind of taking inventory at each little millimeter along the way, see if you can get into this kind of micro awareness of the neck. And eventually, when you get to some kind of stopping point on the right side, you might slowly move your left shoulder any which way. So maybe a little forward, a little back. And just see if that causes you any nice feelings through that left side of your neck. Maybe a little shoulder circle with the left shoulder i feel like a little bit of a front to back motion is nice and then let your head come back down toward the center in slow motion bringing your left ear toward your left shoulder now if you notice your body kind of clenching up as you move to um, kind of protect yourself from pain or anything, just notice that. See, you can kind of identify what might be going on there. But it's enough just to notice. And once your left ear gets toward your left shoulder, Feel free to circle around that right shoulder or move it in a front to back kind of way, playing with sensation through the right side of the neck and shoulder. And at your own pace now, maybe going a little faster, rocking your head side to side, dipping down through center a couple or between each side. And then bringing your chin back down toward the center of your chest. With an inhale, lift your gaze, lift your chin, gazing upward. You can kind of push your chin out a little bit so you feel a little stretch. And with your exhale, lower your chin back down toward your chest. Go ahead and do that a couple times, being mindful that the shoulders stay relaxed. And we'll come to neutral here any moment. And let's tent the fingertips off to the sides. If you can reach whatever you're sitting on, hopefully it isn't too far from the ground. Lengthen your spine upwards. Maybe switch the cross of your leg or add even more um, support if you need to change anything up there. And then we will begin. Let's inhale and join hands up and overhead, sweeping the arms around. And then exhale, bring your hands together at heart center with a little tuck of your chin. Inhale, hands reach high, your gaze could follow. And exhale, lower your arms back down. We're going to change things up a little bit here. We're going to do each arm independent of each other. So keep your left hand planted. With your inhale, just lift the right hand up. With your exhale, bring right your right hand down to heart center. Inhale, left hand reaches up. Exhale, left hand joins the right at heart center. Inhale, right hand only, lifting high. Exhale, lower just the right arm. Inhale, left arm lifts. Exhale, left arm lowers. Now together again, inhale, both arms lift. And exhale, hands to heart. 
Inhale, hands high once more. And exhale, lower your arms down. Let's keep the right hand on the floor. You might lean over toward the right side to plant your hand. And then look up and over toward the left side as you lift your left arm high. We're getting into some side bends here. Inhale, lifting straight up with the left hand. And exhale, side bending toward the right. Inhale, lifting just a little bit, just enough for a full breath in. And exhale, side bend to the right. Let's stay on this side one more time. Inhale to rise. And exhale to side bend. Let's stay in the side bend for another breath in and out. And let's come up to switch sides. The left hand finding the left side of the floor. And your right hand lifting high. Gazing up toward that right hand if it's comfortable for your neck. Inhale, reach even higher. And exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, rising just a bit. Exhale, side bend. One more time on this side, inhaling to rise. And exhaling to bend. Stay here for one more breath in. And one more breath out. Come on back up, both arms can lower. Let's come to hands and knees next. So adjusting your props. If you like extra cushioning underneath your knees, grabbing a little something there. I feel like it just, it just feels like a treat <laughs> to have extra cushion under the knees. We'll go through cat and cow here. So hands right below the shoulders, knees below the hips. Inhale, cow pose, belly lowers, gaze and tailbone lifting. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, find your cat pose. Inhale, cow, belly lowering, gaze and tailbone lift. Exhale, cat. Keep flowing with your breath. And feel free to add on any little detours or what have you. Take the scenic route, <laughs> a little twist or turn. All right. We'll come up to stand on the knees now. Um, so if you do need cut cushioning, go ahead and grab it. We'll bring the arms out, uh, out wide. We're gonna do a little bit of active twisting. So we're gonna start to turn to the right. The arms are out. Bring your left hand to heart center. So we're just kind of making this type of um, gesture as the right hand and the right gaze go to the right. And then we'll switch. Right hand comes to heart, left hand, and arm twisting to the left. Go ahead and play with this for a few rounds, switching sides. See if there's a breathing pattern that feels right to you. And can you notice, do you, do you have more mobility turning to one side than the other? Are there any pains or any kind of messages from the body happening as you keep up with this movement a little bit longer? Don't be surprised if you start to feel a little bit warm. And whenever you've had enough, just ending with the left side and then coming back to the center, lowering the arms down. We're coming back to our tabletop position. We're gonna thread the needle next. So a little bit more twisting mobility here. We're gonna lift that right hand high, circle around the right wrist at the top, wiggle all your fingers, lots of movement, maybe bend and straighten the elbow a couple times. And on your next exhale, thread the needle, right arm dipping down and through, right shoulder and side of the head 
finding the floor or props. <clears throat> Check in with the left hand and place it somewhere that feels supportive to this pose. Maybe up near the top of your mat, or you can just continue to press into the floor by, the, by your face. And for two more breaths, send your awareness to your right shoulder blade. Start to think about switching sides, planting your left hand down and rising all the way back up, right hand high again, and then lower the right hand down. It's okay if you're a little ahead or behind, um, there's no such thing. <laughs> so just keep going at your own pace. We're lifting the left arm high. Take a few breaths at the top, circling your left wrist, wiggling your fingers, maybe bending and straightening that right or the left elbow a couple times. Prepare with an inhale and with an exhale, thread the needle, left arm dipping down and through, left side of the head, left shoulder, finding the floor or props. Right hand, finding a supportive role to play. And taking a couple of breaths, focusing on sensation through the left shoulder, left shoulder blade. And when you've had enough, we'll plant the right hand by your face and lift your way all the way back up, left arm rising and then lowering back to the floor. Let's find our way to extended child's pose next. So knees out wide, big toes touching. We've got some options as always. Um, if you have your blocks close by and you want a little bit uh, more kind of shoulder and chest work, you could bring your blocks um, about shoulder width distance apart and bring your elbows onto the blocks, joining palms, and then sinking your chest and your head between the blocks. Hands or elbows bending so that your thumbs maybe rest at the back of your neck. Lots of space on either side. Try to soften. And let's take a clearing breath here, inhaling through your nose. Nice big sigh to let it go. Start to think about coming back up, straightening your arms, rising. We will um, find our way to downward dog. Always got my blocks, so those are up at the top. Curling your toes under, slowly lifting your knees, reaching the tailbone high. Nice little stretch through the calves and the back of the legs here. Find your breath first and foremost. And if you'd like to bend and straighten opposite knees, you can find that pedaling like motion. Feels kind of nice, I think, to lift up to the tippy toes and then back down a couple times too, stretching through the bottom of the feet. Definitely the calves. <clears throat> okay. Let's make our way to the back of the mat now. So bending your knees, look up toward your hands and then walk your hands toward the back of your mat. We'll do a wide legged forward fold. So toe heeling your feet out, maybe near the edges of your mat or a little wider get a little bit of a, a flowing sway like motion here if you like or just hold the opposite elbows 
You could find some support by having your hands on your shins or even coming up to a halfway lift position, maybe getting, you know, a little more sensation there through the hamstrings. Ooh, that feels good. Highly recommend trying that halfway lift position. Maybe nodding your head yes and shaking your head no. And bending a little deeper through the knees. Start to walk your hands up your legs. Coming to stand. Ah, adjusting any, any clothing. Um, once you get up there, let's find our little shakeout moment. So just get right into it, a little bit of a shaking movement, which parts of your body feel like moving or shaking first today. Maybe if you don't know where to start, I always like a lift and a lower of the heels. Just really letting um, the heels kind of like a medium drop down so you get that nice deep bounce throughout the tissues of your body. Get things flowing. You can jump a little bit or just ah, let out a little, little shout. <laughs> okay. We're at the back of our mat. Let's start our flow today. Finding a foot position that feels good. Let's pick up all the toes, spread them out, and set them right back down. Spin the palms to face the front of your space. Go ahead and grab hold of your hips for a second here and just see if you can kind of suss out uh, how the pelvis is um, aligning right now. Some people have kind of like a sway in the low back, which kind of makes their booty stick out a little bit more. Um, if that's the case, we can try to tuck the tailbone under, kind of engaging the low belly. If you know that you have like a tilted pelvis the other way, you can do the work to get back to that neutral position. And using your hands kind of can help. Also helps if you put one hand on the sacrum, one hand on the belly. You can just kind of feel that tilt. Neutral is what we're going for. And then coming back to mountain pose with your hands at your side. Maybe closing your eyes for a moment as you feel your strength and power here in mountain pose. Sturdy. unshakable even just like a big mountain all right inhale hands go high exhale baby back bend will goal post the arms bending your elbows squeeze the glutes and then lift your chest and gaze up inhale come back up to center exhale fold inhale halfway lift Exhale, walk your hands all the way out to your high plank, shoulders over wrists, one big breath in here, and exhale, knees lower, chest lowers. Now you always have the option to take any little back bend um, here that you'd like, so we like to do cobra or half locust pose. Today I'm going to offer up a unclasped bow pose. <laughs> so if you want to try that, we'll bend the knees so the feet are standing up or the feet are in the air. <clears throat> then we're going to reach the arms back as if we're reaching for the legs, but we're not going to grab a hold of the legs, even if you can. <laughs> With your inhale, rising up, lifting your thighs, lifting your chest as much as you can, continuing to reach your arms toward your ankles. Stay for one, two, or three breaths. And when you're done, lower down, bringing your left cheek to the mat or prop. Take a rest. Let your heels splay out to the side. Maybe rock the pelvis a little bit if that helps you soften up the low back. And 
then we'll go through one more three breath um, moment here with a back bend. So choose your own adventure. You can always come to baby cobra if you prefer. Otherwise, we're bending the knees, reaching those arms back, and then lifting up as if we can reach those ankles. Take a couple of breaths, one, two, or three breaths. And whenever you finish, go ahead and lower down, bringing the other cheek to the mat. Softening up your body as quickly as you can. <sighs> Sighs, always welcome. And then coming back to the center, let's push our way up to tabletop and then back to child's pose. Let's have two breaths in child's pose. Inhale, rise up to tabletop. And exhale, downward dog, curling the toes under. Nice strong arms and legs here, pushing hands into the floor, breathing in and out. In and out. One more breath in. One more breath out. Inhale, bend your knees, look to the top of your mat, but with your exhale, walk your hands to the back of your mat, finding uh, our frog squat. Um, so heels are still lifted here. If this is a little too low for you, you can come up with hands on your knees to a little squat position and um, stay up, up tall. Otherwise, we're kind of in this little <laughs> frog pose. With your inhale, straightening the legs, finding a little bit of a forward fold. Exhale, get back into our frog pose. Walks can be really nice here too, or a, or a chair seat. Two more times, we're inhaling to straighten the legs, forward fold, and exhale, ribbit. <laughs> One more time, inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, frog. Frog was a big hit in the preschool yoga classes I used to teach. All right, now let's come all the way up to stand. Take your time, maybe rolling your way up slowly, maybe getting there in a breath or two. Let's join the palms at heart center. Just take a couple moments to be with yourself. Bringing things back into balance, even just a little. And instead of a clearing breath, let's take one round of OM. So inhale through your nose. Let's go ahead and ohm it out. Om. Inhale, hands go high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk your hands all the way out to your high plank. You can always lower your knees right away here. Let's see if we can stay for three breaths. Inhale and exhale. Feel your strength. Inhale and exhale. One more breath in. Breath out, lower your knees, lower your chest. Let's just do baby cobra this time through. So pressing the tops of your feet down into the mat. With your inhale, just your head and chest lifting. Baby cobra. And exhale, lower. 
Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, lower. One last time. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Pressing your way up and back. Knees could be wide. Knees could be close together. Choosing your own adventure here. Let's take two more breaths in child's pose. With an inhale, rising up, tabletop, curling the toes under, and exhaling to our last downward dog. Inhale, when you get there, reach through the shoulders, and exhale. Inhale, remember your intention. Exhale. Last breath in. Last breath out. Inhale, bend your knees deeply. Look up toward your hands. Exhale and walk your hands to the back of the mat, ending in a forward fold at the back. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, joining palms together overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Find your center. Take a few moments to yourself here, maybe closing the eyes. Maybe feeling for the heartbeat or any other signs of life in your body. Let's take one more round of OM here, if you'd like, maybe humming or singing or listening along. Let's inhale through the nose to prepare. Clearing breath in through the nose and a sigh. A blinking eyes open. Lower the hands down. We'll do a little bit of balancing next. Um, so if you need to come to a harder surface or find support with a wall close by, uh, make sure you're all prepared. And we're gonna do. I'm gonna call this falling star. Hopefully nobody falls for real. <laughs> but this is star pose. We normally just take a nice wide star pose, which I think is like a one of those confidence building poses. What do they call those where you're supposed to do a pose before your big interview? <laughs> so this is kind of the, the uh, inspiration is star pose, but we're gonna toe heel the feet in just a little bit here. Arms will still be lifted. Let's see if we can lean over so we're on that right foot a little bit more and you might just come to the left tippy toes here maybe lifting the toes off of the floor for a second or two if that feels good and you want to have a little more challenge you could keep that left foot lifted flexing the left foot just tipping to the side shooting star falling star <laughs> i don't know but you'll you'll probably start feeling that right leg that right glute start to work if you want to take any arm variations you could lower the arms lift them back up when you feel that you've had enough go ahead and step back down take a moment with your eyes closed just to tap in how did that feel in your body And then we'll switch sides. So shifting weight to the left foot, arms going out wide. Start to come up to the right tippy toes there. Maybe lifting the toes off of the floor every so often, touching back down for support. Maybe dipping a little farther and bringing that right foot up. 
Flexing the right ankle. Embrace the wobble. I've really turned around the, I used to think wobbling was just so cringy or so embarrassing, but now I'm like, yes, I am working hard. I'm challenging myself. I'm amazing. I can do it. <laughs> Whenever you're done, step on down, shake it out. <sighs> okay. Let's come all the way down to the floor now. You can grab a sip of water if you need one first and then make your way down. We'll go right to the back in no rush. Eventually pulling your knees in toward your chest and finding some free movement, rocking and rolling a little bit of massaging pressure around the sacrum, the low back. Really get into some Good areas here, I think. And then we'll set the feet down on the ground. Arms can come out wide for support. Let's press the right foot down into the mat as we lift and straighten or almost straighten that left leg up. Circle your left ankle a couple times both ways. Point and flex, ankle and the toes. Lots of movement here through that left foot and ankle. Motion is lotion, you remember? So we're kind of lubricating that joint, synovial fluid. All right, then we're bending the left knee, placing the left ankle on the right thigh, figure four. And you might stay right here or press your left hand into the left knee. Or maybe reach to interlace your fingers behind that right thigh, just so long as the sacrum and the shoulders can comfortably stay on the floor. If that's not the case, I really like uh, a block under that foot instead. If you can't reach that far, a block underneath that right foot can be a nice, happy medium. <sighs> and we're spending a little while here. This is one of those poses that needs time to unfold. Maybe letting your knees kind of rock side to side. You might keep your left foot flexed. And then when the timing is right for you, we will start twisting a little bit side to side. So letting your, your figure four legs twist over to the to one side first and then up and over to the other side. A little bit of a twist. Ooh, my back just cracked a little bit. It felt really good. Ah. <sighs> And coming back up to our neutral figure four, press into the right foot as you lift and straighten that left leg one more time. And then bend the left knee, set your left foot down. If you wanted to try that block um, situation on the other foot, maybe grabbing your block or shifting it over to the other leg this time. So pressing the left foot down, let's lift and straighten or almost straighten that right leg up and give that right ankle and foot a little bit of love with movement. Circling, pointing, flexing. You could try to write your name with your big toe. It's kind of a fun way to, I don't know, just have fun. <laughs> okay. And then we're moving into figure four. So bending your right knee, 
placing that right ankle on the left thigh and finding your expression of this pose. Maybe pressing your right hand into the right knee slightly. Maybe stepping that left foot up onto a block or reaching to interlace the fingers behind that left thigh. Again, making sure that your sacrum and your head and shoulders can comfortably remain on the floor. Otherwise, we're just kind of straining. This is, um, from what I've heard, the number one <laughs> recommended stretch for if you have piriformis syndrome. Um, one of my friends had that. Uh, and this was like the number one thing that helped him find relief and his physical therapist recommended. And you might rock your knees a little bit side to side or find some little movements. And when you're ready, starting that kind of deeper twist, rocking the legs over to one side. And then to the other, you can go back and forth or spend more time on each side. And eventually coming back up to the center. Let's lift and straighten that right leg, grabbing hold behind your thigh or wherever you can comfortably reach. Let's just pull that right leg, uh, straight right leg in a little bit. We're going for a stretch there through the hamstring. So you can always keep your knee a little bit bent here too. Just pulling that leg. Ah, okay. And then we'll switch sides, so lowering the left foot down. Let's just find that hamstring stretch. We'll straighten that left leg, lifting, and then grabbing hold wherever you can comfortably reach and pulling your leg in gently, just enough till you feel some stretch happening there on the back of the left leg. Try to unclench your jaw. Maybe even smile. I don't like to suggest people smile, but I do feel that it really helps if you're feeling strained in a pose. It just kind of, I think, softens. It's like my favorite word, soften. <laughs> You've probably noticed. Okay, let's release that leg. And if there are any last poses, movements, or stretches that you want or need, Let's move through those now. Maybe a long body stretch. Maybe a happy baby. What else are you wanting? And when you're ready to find your final resting pose, decide if you'd like to come to Shavasana with your arms and legs extended, just laying there on the floor. Maybe today you want to bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees go out wide. If that's the case, I highly recommend having support beneath your thighs or knees, even if you feel you don't need it. It'll just give your hip joints a little more security and stability. There's always the opposite of that constructive rest pose with the feet out wide and the knees coming in toward the center. You like to close your eyes, maybe doing that now. If you've had a very internal day or um, feel anxious at all, a really soothing technique for the parasympathetic nervous system is to relax and then just let your gaze just go around all edges, 
just looking around your space it confirms to your brain and your body that there are no threats hopefully in your area so you might just let your gaze wander so it's said that having the eyes open kind of takes you you know to a more external place so internal focus could be the key and if your eyes are closed let's turn the gaze up to the third eye center the screen of the mind it's called so eyes are closed but we're looking kind of up toward the center some people can actually visualize as if it's a screen or like out in space and you might see some colors or shapes or memories or words or anything come come through your screen of the mind but maybe maybe you don't need to to find shapes or colors let's just experiment with this with holding this third eye gaze Being present, slowing your breath, letting go of any tension through the forehead, your eyes, your jaw. Restfulness through the neck and shoulders. Sense or imagine your hands relaxing even more. All the internal organs working together. They're holding down the fort. No need to think too much. Letting your body do what it does. Relaxing the glutes and the pelvis, your legs and feet. Continuing to hold that third eye gaze if it suits you. And noticing and dissolving any unnecessary tension if possible. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three. 
three, two, one, and zero. You are welcome to continue resting and just stay right here, ignoring the rest of this closing of class. But if you are ready now to reawaken, let's do it slowly with a little wiggle of fingers and toes. Little roll of the head side to side. Maybe yawning or stretching or swallowing. The choosing either side to roll onto, finding the fetal position with the knees slightly tucked in. Maybe your bottom arm could be your pillow. One full round of breath here. And at the bottom of your exhale, make your way up to a comfortable seat. We'll join hands at heart center. And we'll have one more opportunity here to chant OM together. So just like we did earlier, we'll take a big inhale to prepare. Shanti, Shanti, Together, bringing thumbs up to third eye center. Let's close class together with a little gesture of gratitude with a bow forward now. Peace.